Welcome to Married to History, where we try to be informative, entertaining, and family-friendly. Aloha, I'm Christopher. I have a fancy piece of paper in my wall that says that I know more about history than most people do. I'm Shirley. I'm a homeschool mom that relies on good curriculum, Christopher, and Les Mis to teach our kids history. (laughs) Before we get into our episode, let's take a minute to talk about something from a past episode. It's important to keep in mind that Shirley doesn't warn me about our topic beforehand, and... I don't even remember what the last couple of things we talked about were. What was the last thing you asked me about? It's, was that was that it's mutiny been a while. or was that Putin or what? Um, the latest one was Vladimir Lenin, and I said before Putin, that, didn't I? Yeah, you Lenin, did. Okay. And before that was Mutiny on the Bounty. Oh, oh okay. So okay, I'm not yeah, as far off yeah, of my memory as I thought yeah. I was. Anyways, it's fun for me to see what he knows right off the top of his head, and that means sometimes we miss things. If you would like to hear a more comprehensive and well-prepared episode on any topic, just let us know. So, honey, I just had one small correction, and I don't even remember which episode this was in. I just had made a note for myself. For some reason, we were talking about cults. Cults? Yeah. Like religious cults? No, it was... I think I compared something to jonestown okay i meant waco i didn't mean jonestown i it was think waco. i knew that yeah i i got the two mixed i said jonestown i meant waco but that that's fine uh, so it's that's fine. you correcting yourself not yes. me needing correction yes once again my yes. uh oh, oh i was gonna use a the wrong word there all right so uh i'm going to not mm-hmm. make the point that i was just mm-hmm. about to make mm-hmm. since i would be failing to make said point mm-hmm Awesome. Well, honey, I have a history question for you. I love history questions. This question actually comes from Cortis. Uh, Which one is that one? The youngest. Oh, the troll. Yes. He was reading about history. I don't know. I think it was American history. And he says, or he asked me, um, are political machines like literally machines that make parties for politicians? They are literally machines in that they are mechanisms that don't have souls. <laughs> That's pretty good. Do they make really fun parties, though? Some people would say yes. I personally would say no, because much like the founding fathers, I am of the belief that no, the parties are uh, an enemy to the system, have made it worse, not better. But are there balloons? There are, but the political machine buys them. It does not make them. Well, that's not fun. All right, so the political machine is mm-hmm. just the the euphemism that we use today okay. to describe the way that politics works, or rather the practices of modern politicians in our country today. Okay. Practices can change, and they have changed from, from country to country, from era to era. From, they've changed for all manner of reasons. Uh, technology, politics, and amongst the uh, amongst the more common ones for why these things change. Mm-hmm. But it's again, it's just that euphemism of what we call just how the system works. There are some okay. people that say, "Ah, oh, we need to break the system, or we need to change the system, we need to revolutionize the system, we need to redo the system." But the whatever the case may be, however the system is working, that's the political machine. Why is uh, it called a machine, though? I honestly don't know. My guess would be it's called the political machine because, again, that's the the way it works. Maybe because it's deemed as to be by those who use the term as that's the the industry of it, the most efficient means of it, the overwhelming, all powerful thing of it. So, for example, it's undeniable, really, that the Democrats and the Republicans kind of control the political machine of today. Right. Another argument would be that money is a necessary element of the political machine today. You can't get around it. You don't really have a good shot of success in the political machine if you don't have lots of money. I mean, machines are expensive. Machines tend to be expensive, yes. And, and well, things bigger, that machines make the, are expensive, The bigger machines too. tend to be expensive, like your car is more expensive, mm, but sure. your pencil sharpener is actually pretty cheap. Yeah, I'm thinking like the machines you'd see on like a assembly line. Like, I'm sure those are pretty expensive. The, again, it would depend. On, oh, okay, the machines that make the yeah. things on the assembly line. Yeah. Okay, yes. I thought you were talking about things that are made by an assembly no, line, not the things not on the assembly line that make. Yes, I would imagine that those things are not cheap. So, uh, looking at the Wikipedia... Um, Don't you mean the Wikipedia? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it claims that the terms machine, okay, the term machine usually is used by its reform minded enemies in a pejorative sense. The terms machine hmm. and boss in the 19th century were negative epithets used by their reform minded opponents. However, in the 20th century, these became standard terms for scholars and analysts who sometimes emphasize their positive contributions. That completely makes sense because as I was describing in the beginning, I thought this is more of an insult thing. So this must have come from somewhere negative. Would that be... I don't know. No, yeah, that 19, would match with what you said. Hold on, 19th century, is that Industrial Revolution? So yeah, t- 19th century, tail end of the 19th century is the Industrial Revolution. Uh, turn of the century, so late 1800s, early 1900s, uh-huh. is when the Progressive Era comes out. And yes, amongst the things that were going on during this time period was there was a rise in the love and use of industry, but with it, a um, rise a in the people that didn't like it. Right. So it's just... PR, you you call the thing you don't like a, a bad name. A lot of things, and then that, it stuck. <laughs> a lot of things that we have today started as yeah, PR that kind of got stuck. Uh, so I don't remember the entire history of it, but I want to say the Republican mascot of an elephant started uh-huh. off as kind of a a joke or an insult. Well, I would assume the donkey was. And I, I would assume the same thing as well, but I like I'm not. I'm not even remotely familiar with how, like, I know I read it once, but I don't remember at all anything about how the Democrats ended up with a donkey. Uh-huh. But if I remember correctly, Republicans got the elephant because it was a common saying around about the time that the Republican Party came into being mm-hmm. that if you had seen something amazing, something radical, something that was out of this world blew your mind, yeah. it was called you saw the elephant. Or people would often ask each other, especially during wartime, yeah. did you see the elephant? In other words, do you weird. see this monumental, weird, bizarre thing? Okay. And the radical Republicans were these weird, bizarre, new kind of guys. Oh. I, I don't follow. It doesn't seem sound like an insult to me. Okay. And again, I, I don't might, know. That's weird. I might be remembering wrong, so I should rephrase. I know that I'm right about the, the use uh-huh. of the elephant term. Did you see the elephant? It was okay. how people would talk to one child and ask it. Did you see something marvelous or miracle? Okay. And so I was assuming that that's how the Republicans got the mascot. Maybe I am remembering that wrong, and the Republicans ended up with an elephant for some different reason. I don't know. Of my favorites, I think, are the, so there are other political parties, though, and yeah. they do also have animal mascots. I don't know how official these animal oh. mascots are, since the parties themselves are so small. Never but occurred su- to me they would. Supposedly, and I think this is hilarious if it's true, the Prohibition Party is still a political party that exists on some level in what? the United States. And their mascot, give me a guess. Um, a bottle of whiskey. I don't know. Why would the Prohibition <laughs> Party be a bottle of whiskey? Irony. I don't know. What What's the most drunk animal? Or the most sober animal? You're getting closer. The most sober animal. How is one closer, animal more sober than another? A camel. The Prohibition oh, mascot dry. is a camel because it's dry. It's dry. Okay, that makes sense. That does. Okay, but Some back other to... party had a pelican for their mascot. I don't remember pelican? which one that was. Is there a party that eats trash no it was a, it was a it was one of the more popular third parties too i just i don't remember which one it was off the top of my head i don't know i found these when my, one of my students was asking me about other political parties and since that we had the donkeys and the elephants yeah there, um, i decided to look it up and find out oh yeah there's uh, other animals that have been used but again because these other parties are so small i don't know all that much about their leadership, their right. official organization, one that I don't know how much of that is. All right, yes, that party actually embraced that symbol, or somebody somewhere put that animal on one of their pamphlets or something. Yeah, like that. or or it was used in one political cartoon. Yeah, cool. Okay, so back to political machines, though. I get it has to do with political parties, but like, what does it mean? <laughs> Okay, so the po- use it in a sentence. Modern day, how would I use political machine in a sentence today? Um, the modern political machine operates on money. The modern political machine uh, operates on uh, more of a popular opinion than necessarily on merit. Uh, the modern political machine is made up by the Democrats and the Republicans. The modern political machine is a vote or a rising trend in the modern political machine is voting by mail it, any any part or any process that has anything to do mm-hmm. with politics is part of the political machine just like in an assembly line okay okay the, uh, if you're building cars for example even if one part is doing the tires another part is doing the engine block another part is doing the seats when uh-huh. I, I don't know anything about how cars 
are put together in an assembly line. <laughs> really? But it's all part of the machine, even if it's not one of the more luxurious or recognized processes. It's still so, part of the machine. So you're it's using how it? the thing gets made. Okay. All of the things that I listed are how politics get done. So okay. an additional piece of the political machine then that I didn't mention would be it's how members in Congress get their votes. It's how the president works with Congress. It's how okay. uh, the it, it's how anything gets it's it's how people get into politics. It's how politics works, and it's how politics are executed as well. All of that is okay. part of the political machine. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So here's my confusion because occasionally I will check Wikipedia on our topics, so I'm not. So, so I know what to ask you, right? So that's what I did. Okay, so the definition that the Wikipedia says is, in the politics of representative democracies, a political machine is a party organization that recruits its members by the use of tangible incentives like money or political jobs. And that mm -hmm. is characterized by a high degree of leadership control over member activity. So... So that so would suggest that they're it, limiting it to it's the a group. party. So okay. So I'm curious. Then is that a misunderstanding that that you have on the use of the word, or is the use of the word changed? Because the way you use political Either, machine um, made sense to me. I feel like I've heard that in the media. Uh, either was possible. It's entirely possible that, and so th this often, the, we, we've talked about this briefly, uh, not all historians agree, not all experts on any one thing agree uh -huh. about this, that, or the other thing. So my understanding of political machine is obviously what I've stated. Yeah. It's entirely possible that it's there like are other concept. people and maybe even a majority of people disagree with my uh -huh. interpretation and would say something else. So the one that you described me just now sounds like, okay, that one is saying that the political machine refers specifically to a party. Or and an that organization sense, that but, recruits to the party. Yeah, so that makes sense. But like to me, that would suggest that, okay, so that's not the political machine. That would be the Republican machine or the Democrat machine or the reformist, oh. the pro prohibitionist, the green, the whatever machine. Uh -huh. So it's not wrong, but... To my to my mind, what I would say to people is that okay, well, that one's limiting it. Uh -huh. That's not the political. That is a political machine, but it's uh -huh. not the political machine. Okay, so to, to, to go off of what we've said in a couple other things, yeah. I'm thinking about political machine from a macro perspective. That would seem to limit political machine to a micro perspective, right? Or I wonder if this it's the historical perspective, the way it was originally mm -hmm. used. That so could also be true. For example, to bring it definitely back to history. What is Tammany Hall? That was a historical political machine. But I don't know what it is. Like, all I know is I have this vague recollection of Tammany Hall being bad. But actually, it might have been good because it represented some underrepresented people. And I have that scene from Feifel, American Tale movie, in my head of, like, the mice. Like, didn't they call that Tammany Hall in the movie? I'm pretty sure they I did. Do, I have no recollection or memory whatsoever of what Tammany Hall is. You don't know what Tammany Hall is? I have no recollection <gasps> of it whatsoever. I feel like that's one of those important things. Because it, like, I don't know what it is, but I know I've heard it several times, so it must have been important at some point in like high school U.S. history. There's plenty of important things that I do not know about. <laughs> For shame. It's really. How many episodes <laughs> have we done? How many episodes have we done? 46. 46. And how many times have you hit me with something I did not know anything about? Often enough to entertain me. That could be once. <laughs> okay, so... I'm, I'm willing to bet that at most you caught me off guard with three. Maybe, maybe as many as five. That still makes my percentage, yeah. my batting average, darn good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Perhaps if you said one or two things that you know about no, Tammany Hall... No, I don't. Hall. That's the oh, problem. I that. don't. <laughs> Perhaps if you remembered one or two things or looked up one or two things about Tammany Hall, you could say uh -huh. something that might jog my memory. It's uh -huh. entirely possible, but I know everything it? about it. I just don't know it by that name. I'll Google it. 19th century. Uh, wait, where did that sentence so go? That's a pretty big span. Can you narrow it down a bit? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was an American political organization founded in 1786. Uh, it so became... that predates the Constitution. Are you sure you got that date right? No, no, okay, let me read the whole sentence. It was originally known as the Society of St. Tammany, the Sons of St. Tammany, or the Columbian Order. It was a political organization founded in 1786 and incorporated on May 12, 1789 as the Tammany Society. It became the main local political party of the Democratic Party. Nope. 
It became the main local political machine of the Democratic Party and played a major role in controlling New York City and New York State politics and helped immigrants, most notably the Irish, rise in American politics from the 1850s to the 1960s. And it goes on from there. Yeah, never heard Not of ringing it. a bell? Doesn't ring a bell at all. Cool. Okay, so we are going to pause here. We're going to do another two-parter. Okay. So don't make this a long one. I don't need to know every detail. You brought it up. I know. And you, and you challenged me. You insulted I me know. with my, oh, you don't know about this? This is such a big thing. And I'm thinking, even after you, you let de- me down. Even after you described all of that, I'm still thinking to myself that, okay, it can't be that big of a deal because nothing of what you're saying is sounding familiar to me. So I'm That's guessing. That's so crazy. I'm, I'm not saying that it's not going to be an interesting thing to look up, but I'm willing to bet it's not as big of a thing as you're making it out to be. But it was in American Tale. <laughs> it was a good movie. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the movie. <laughs> But here, well, this is another thing that has me semi-confused because a couple of things that you said aren't matching up. The dates that you're giving me aren't uh-huh. matching up because the date you're giving me predates the Constitution, yeah. which means that there would have been no need for a political party given the government system that it, the United States had at the time. It wasn't a political party. It became a political machine okay, of and, the Democratic Party. Well, and then the additional thing that I would have to say to that is, okay, well, the Democratic Party didn't exist at the time either. Right. So it obviously changed over the years. Yeah. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna pause. We're gonna aim to not have this be an hour long episode, but you're gonna look it up. I'll okay? consider it. Okay. I'll consider it. Okay, bye. All right, and we're back. So it's been several weeks for us <laughs> since we started this episode. Mm. Has it? Oh my. <laughs> At least Two. I thought it's been three. I'll have to take your word for it. I don't know. It does it, seem like it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> anyway, so we were talking about political part, no, political machines, and I brought up Tammany Hall because that was the only political machine that I could name. That's and you how couldn't. we got started up on this. Yes. yes. And even after everything that I've researched and read or whatnot, I found like a handful of names, uh-huh. like I think two names in particular that seemed familiar to me. Yeah. But even after I looked up these guys and I read about them, I'm like, yeah, this, I have no idea who these really? people are. So, but at least I answered okay. the question that was most and that was foremost pertinent into my mind. Got it. Was that okay? If you who remembers this being such a big thing, why haven't I ever heard of it, or at least not even recognize it? And yeah, that's right, weird. so and I got the answer that I think I was looking for because I watched Five Flick Goes West more than you. Well, that may be, but more so it's the idea that hmm, these guys were very, and I mean very, very limited to New York City. Oh. And that would be the reason. So they never did anything on the grander like stage, I would say. Scale? They never did anything in the macro stage, I would say. They literally yeah. were in New York. But Every where's... now and then they went They went out into states level, uh-huh. but that was basically it. They were New York City. But weren't they emblematic of a thing going on at the time? It seems like one of those you examples could, that you would point to when you're studying other things at the time. You period. could say that, but then the so they would be they that would make them one part uh, that would make them one ingredient of a very very complex dish. Uh huh. Okay. And again, that would be why I probably never heard of them before. So, like when I'm re- when I was learning about them, I'm, okay, I'm familiar about these type of tactics. I'm yeah. familiar about groups doing this thing or that thing. I'm familiar about this type of corruption and whatnot. Yeah. But again, these these specific names, this specific place, no, I'm not overly familiar with that. Oh. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. without further ado, what is it? All right. So, Tammany Hall is actually a band in New York City that was founded in 1997. A band? They're an indie rock group, and they've actually had some of their stuff play on some uh, TV shows. Uh, a list that I saw was uh, Sopranos, Scrubs, Sex and the City had some of their music playing. Wait, you're being serious. Yeah. <laughs> it is the name of a band? Yeah. <laughs> Tammany Hall, New York City Band. And I believe they are still operating. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so, I don't, I don't th- that's it. Episode over. Well, that was easy. <laughs> yes. Like I said, I'd never heard of these guys before. They are very, very limited. And okay. Uh, okay, I don't think, yeah, I never watched any of those shows. No. Okay, well, you know, what, what's the other Tammany Hall? Oh, okay. All right, well. I mean, you have a lot of papers in front of you. I know you did more research. Than I do have a lot of papers band. in front of me, and I did do a lot of more research. All right. 
Well, so uh, let's see. Should I start with the things that you're going to like or should I start with the... Okay, no, I'm going to start from some of the things Aww. that I thought were cool about it. Aww. All right. So, yes, you are absolutely correct. This was a political body, a group a poli- that had its own political machine, the okay. way that they were trying to run the show. Uh, they started off as being anti-federalists. The anti-federalists eventually merge into the Democratic Republicans, who eventually merge or merge and become, or not merge, who eventually become the Democratic Party that uh-huh. exists today. And yes, Tammany Hall is, with very rare exceptions, exclusively loyal to this party from its inception all the way to its ending. Okay, so, so spe- oh, hold on, so. So you're just talking anti-federalist. So did this go all the way back to like Hamilton Federalist Paper Times? This goes back before the Constitution. Or well, Tam. So okay. Uh, so Sorry, I'm gonna have go to ahead. back up a little bit. All right. So yes, they they become Tammany Hall becomes prominent in the wake of the Constitution. Oh. But Tammany societies uh-huh. these were around beforehand. So there were multiple societies, Tammany societies, up and down the 13 colonies, or eventually the 13 states. Were they just like social clubs? or Essentially, yes. They were, they were, um, there's a lot of descriptions to it. So they were social clubs. They were gentleman-like clubs. But they were also, you had to be a pure American to be part of them. And when I say oh. pure American, that meant that they wanted you to be British, uh, Anglo, Dutch, uh-huh. or even Native American. So. Oh. So yes, that was kind of an, an awkward thing about them. But like a lot of American things that started up, especially at this time period, they borrowed a lot of their culture, their practices and whatnot, mm-hmm. including their name, from Native Americans. Oh. Tammany is actually the American name given to a Native American chief. Uh, oh. His name was Tamanend. Uh, from the, and I'm probably going to butcher this, the Lene, Lenny Lenape tribe. Okay. So they're a tribe that was originally uh, in the – they're. Uh, I couldn't get a straight answer on this. There were some sources that were saying they were part of the Delaware people. Uh-huh. There were others saying that, no, the Delaware people were a part of them or some oh. of their territory was in the area disputed between them and the Delaware people. So I didn't get a solid answer on that. Okay. Um, it is a tribe that still exists though today. And yeah, the first one was founded in 1772. So before the revolution even Whoa. begins. It's founded in 1772 in Philadelphia, and yeah, they took their name from him. The chief was very well respected, um, so a couple of things. He was the chief that made significant efforts in trying to have peaceful deals with the white Europeans in uh-huh. the early days. If I recall correctly, he is at least believed to be the one who signed the original uh, peace treaty or uh, articles of uh, friendliness or whatnot with William Penn. So, oh. yeah, he's a, he's a famous, and so for this, he had at least respect, or he was at least revered, if not mm-hmm. truly respected or whatnot, by a lot of Americans. Right. And so, yes, that's where they get their name from it, especially wow. because in their early days, they wanted to be kind of like a, a peaceful and organized, a good, just, moral kind of society type thing. Cool. And so, again, that was the Tammany Society, and that was the, mm-hmm. the, the kind of like the, the BSA, I guess you could say, up and down. There were chapters all over the place. Uh-huh. But the one that we're going to be focusing on that will eventually be called Tammany Hall is mm-hmm. the New York City chapter, if you will. Right. So if I remember correctly, some of the other societies are still around to this day. Some of them may have changed their names or whatnot, but they are, there's still some, some part of them around. That is still respected. If I remember correctly, there is some essence of Tammany Hall still in Pennsylvania. Or sorry, not Tammany Hall. Tammany Society Uh still in Pennsylvania. And they still have parades and celebrations. If not for the society, at least for this chief. Mm -hmm. And he's got a monument uh, somewhere in the state also. So yeah, there are there are vestiges of the society that are Mm -hmm. still around. But Tammany Hall, the thing that we're going to be talking about was again, yeah, New York City. And it is most definitely gone. Okay. So Tammany Hall, I believe, starts about 1789. So again, after the revolution and uh-huh. about the same time as the Constitution. And will continue until about 1967 Whoa. is when it's going to just disappear for all intents and almost purposes. Almost 100 years. Try that again. 200 years. There you go. All right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so almost two centuries. 17 to 19. And, I gotcha. And during those two centuries of their time in New York City, they are the undisputed dominant leaders of uh-huh. Democratic. There are the Democratic Party, Party and the Democratic things in the uh, 
yeah, Democratic Party things in New York City. Uh -huh. They are not always going to win. Sometimes the Whigs or the Republicans or other third parties are going to beat them. Uh -huh. On at least one or two occasions, they are going to sabotage their own members and support the competitors. What? So there's, I, I don't remember those details off the head, of but it's in here, so hopefully so, I'll be able to find them and look at those. So they're enough. linked with the Democratic Party, but they are not the Democratic Party. Correct. They are linked to the Democratic Party. They are not the Democratic Party, and it's that oh. change Changes in the Democratic Party, the same changes that come about in the era of the Great Depression, especially with FDR, uh -huh. that are going to lead to them ultimately being destroyed. Wow. So it is true that Tammany in, does eventually become, if not from the very beginning, is a corrupt society. They mm -hmm. they want to control politics. Again, starting off with the Anti-Federalists, but eventually getting all the way into the Democratic Party. They mm -hmm. want to be the controllers of the Democratic Party in New York City. Okay. And again, I want to be clear that they are very limited to New York City. They do make the occasional outgoing to get some people into important state jobs, like mm -hmm. they'll make a run at the governorship from time to time and the state attorney general. Mm -hmm. But other than that, they really don't do anything outside of New York City. Wow. So a uh, couple of things on my list here. Uh, all right, so I mentioned that it was for native-born Americans. They were not open to immigrants. In fact, in their very beginning days, they didn't like immigrants. But but they started so quickly after. That's just weird to me. Because people were still immigrating. Like, the country was still growing at that point when they began. Mm -hmm. There weren't many people who were native-born Americans. Mm -hmm. That's so weird. Well, okay, well so, but at the same time, so this this is happening in uh, the 1780s. Uh -huh. The first British colonies are founded in 1600, so there's been almost oh. two centuries of time for an American identity. And okay. I, I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast before, but at least um, by, uh, by the standards that I choose to support, mm -hmm. the idea that there was an American identity among the 13 colonies as early as at least the 1750s yeah. and possibly even earlier than that supports the idea that, no, okay, 20 years later, so a generation later, yeah, there's a society that could crop up and uh -huh. uh, not unlike the the daughters of the American Revolution or the mm -hmm. daughters of the Southern Confederacy or whatnot, they could say, no, we're going to we're going to celebrate this thing that we think is ours and unique to us. Yeah. yeah. No. I, OK, that makes sense. All right. So, yes. And in, in the beginning, they were definitely on the side of, with the side of the anti-federalists. Aaron Burr, actually, so this is one of those rare exceptions where they did get into outside of New York City affairs. Uh -huh. Aaron Burr uh, effectively took control of the organization, or rather utilized the organization, mm -hmm. to be his main campaign force when he ran for president in the uh, election of 1800. I like that, Aaron Burr. There are some historians who theorize that it's their work, uh -huh. uh, Tammany's work for Aaron Burr, that cost um, John Adams re-election. Because New York was an important <laughs> state at the time. I thought it was Hamilton that cost Adams his re-election. Hamilton was more of an Adams man than he was an Aaron Burr and a Thomas Jefferson man. But in the musical, he destroyed uh, no, really, Adams. Yeah. I never understood that part of the musical, but so, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so they, they were in league with Aaron Burr. This changed, though, because when Burr killed Hamilton, mm -hmm. Hamilton was just too popular in New York. So Tammany mm -hmm. kind of said, all right, no, we're not uh, going to deal with you anymore. They disowned him. So, yeah, they disowned him. <laughs> not going to be the first time that Tammany's going to disown one of their members because yeah. uh, of some scandal. Yeah. Oh, so and so, okay, on a, on a broader note with their history, mm -hmm. because I, I don't want to read through every single charge of every single crime that they did. Okay. The most common crimes that are, are corruptions that are going to take place within mm -hmm. Tammany Hall are going to be some fairly common ones in political corruption. So there's going to be real estate problems. There's going to be bribery charges uh -huh. and there's going to be the occasional abuse of power. Okay. So on the first one, the that seems like typical politics, like yeah. nothing new. Okay. So on the first one, the real estate, there are several, several is the wrong number. There are many cases in uh -huh. Tammany's 200-year history of the members buying up land mm -hmm. and then using their government influence because some of their members are in government or they sponsored people yeah. that are now in government. And then having those government bodies say that, oh, hey, we're going to build a new park. We're going to build a monument. We're going to do this, that, or the other thing. We need land to do this thing. And then buying that land from Tammany members. At a huge markup. At a huge markup, yes. 
Dang. Oh, actually, that brings me So on one specific occasion uh, that I remember in the early 1800s, mm-hmm. uh, one of the programs they decided to do was they decided to build a cemetery, a special cemetery and a memorial uh-huh. for fallen soldiers in, uh, during the American Revolution. Sounds great. Yep. Sounds like a good idea. So, yeah, they were going to they were basically going to go to all these scattered burial grounds that they knew of at battle uh-huh. sites, dig up the soldiers have a proper cemetery for them, give them a proper burial till, and again, they were going to build a monument for them. Great. So they did move the bodies, but but they pocketed the money. The memorial still hasn't been built. Are you freaking kidding me? No. How did they get away with that? That's a darn good question. So there are going to be lots of scandals along this line, again, throughout Tammany's history. And almost always the case is this. They're doing something bad, eventually they get caught or uh-huh. eventually rather there's enough public fervor to do something about it or to demand something be done about it. Right. That ends up costing Tammany an election or two. So they have like mm-hmm. a, say a, a grand total of about like a four to five year. Uh, okay. Yeah. We're, we're not the cool kids anymore. Yeah. And then people seem to forget. Uh. And then after that one or two election cycles, yeah. They're right back to where where they were in power and control, uh-huh. and right back to their shenanigans again. People's memories and they just are keep so surviving short. like yeah. that over and over again. Yeah, they just need to weather the storm until people forget again. That's mm-hmm. again, nothing changes. That's still politics. That's still you know celebrities who have done bad things. That's still today. <laughs> that's cra- that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mentioned the real estate deals, and uh, there were also, sometimes Tammany themselves would be building these projects, like um, an office building that they are, it might have been their headquarters, a building that they decided to build for themselves. Uh They got government contracts to supply the materials and the money and whatnot to build this thing for Uh themselves, and yeah, they were charging the government like $3,000 for a nail, $10,000 for a chair. This was yeah. one of those things that, like, even the even if the press was in their pocket, they couldn't hide that. And it was one of those things that demanded public right. investigation. And, yeah, a couple members got busted in, in the scandalous affair. Party, yeah. uh, Tammany kind of tries to distance itself from them. Oh, yeah. And then after an election or two, mm-hmm. they're right back at it again. Yeah, yeah. Pick a couple scapegoats among your myths, kick them out, and then you can mm-hmm. continue as an organization. Uh, when it comes to the okay, so going forward a couple of years, when it comes to time for the War of eighteen twelve, this is going to be a time where there's going to be a split in the what will eventually be the Democratic Party, but as the Democratic Republicans at the time, okay, because there are uh, the the split is there are the pro war Democrats and there mm-hmm. are the pro peace Democrats. Okay, Tammany's going to find itself on the war side, if I remember correctly, against the peace side, and this is going to be something that's going to cost Tammany a couple of elections because now with them being split, mm-hmm. their opponents in the Whig Party are able to get a little bit of more wiggle room, a little bit more influence, Whig. and win a couple of elections. Whig. Wig old yes, room. the wig party. Yeah, they got some wig. And yes, old they got room. some wiggle room. Okay. Yes, you're okay. you're so clever. You should you should we put that on a meme up. or something like <laughs> we that. We can't pass up these moments, honey. Uh huh. So this is all, the the War of eighteen twelve point. This is also when they are going to get rid of a lot of their Native American influence. So mm. by this point, they were calling their headquarters uh, wigwams. They were oh. using a lot of Native American words, vocabulary, hand symbols, and gestures and things of that uh-huh. nature in a lot of their practices because it's cool. Right. It's like, that's like the Boy Scouts of America or other people that things that do these things. They, oh, we draw a lot of this because we think it's cool. Oh, yeah. Typical right. summer camp, stereotypical stuff. Mm. That's all of that. But they're going to get rid of a lot of that uh, after the war, during the war years of 1812 and afterwards uh-huh. especially because – during the American Revolution and just particular during the War of 1812, the Native Americans remained loyal and by a large part remained loyal to the British. During yeah. the War of 1812, the British were smuggling weapons and equipment to a lot of the hostile Native or a lot of the Native Americans that mm-hmm. still lived in the northern parts of the country. And it was basically fueling them and rebelling and attacking the United States or rather yeah. defending themselves when the United States attacked them. Right. So they wanted to disassociate from that because, again, doesn't look good. It's going to cost us mm-hmm. votes. So I dare say that there was no job that they were fighting over more or tried to control more than who was going to be mayor of New York City. And 
this was something that was going to cost them votes. Yeah. Uh, future president, he's not president yet, but future president Martin Van Buren mm-hmm. is going to effectively become the leader of Tammany Hall in the 1810s. Uh, among the things that were kind of unique that he did, so um, the Erie Canal is going to get uh, started during that time. Tammany Hall actually was against this. They didn't want the canal, really? but Van Buren did want the canal. He recognized it was going to be good for New York business. So despite the fact that the rest of the hall didn't want it because he was effectively the leader at the time, he was able to yeah. uh, help their political opponents get it done. Oh, um, he wait. So he was leading it at the time. He was he leading it at the time. His own yeah. So there, there was a term for the leader. I want to say it was called the Sashwan or something to that nature. I don't. Another I have no Native idea American how it was pronounced. Term? Yes. Okay. Uh, but basically, he was the leader. Okay. All right, so yeah, they got the Erie Canal done, um, even though it was yeah, a Tammany Hall rival that started the project. Wow. Um, among the things that he did uh, that were also done at this time was that Tammany Hall in about 1821 is going to support the idea of all free white men being allowed to vote. All free white men. Not just landowners. So, yeah, and the 1820s is about when the Tammany Hall is going to get rid of its, oh, we are a native American-born uh-huh. society and embrace the idea of immigrants. And this they're going to do because wow. in a previous election, uh, so um, there, are, there are two big political families in New York through much of Tammany's history, uh-huh. uh, one of which being the Clinton family. And the, Any relation? I don't know. I should have Darn looked that it. up because, like, even I had the question myself from time yeah. to time, but I didn't because they're, the Clintons have always, yeah. at least a branch of the Clintons have always been big in New York. Uh, wow. One of the generals who fought for the British against the Americans during the Revolution was General Clinton, and he oh. was in command of the of the British Army in New York. Wow. Well, it's probably not the same family because they're from the South. It's probably not, and I imagine that Clinton is a very popular name. Yeah. Though you got to admit it, this is kind of awkward because the even though Clinton's got hit, to my knowledge, the Clintons got their fame in Arkansas because uh-huh. he was governor there. They quickly moved to New York. Hillary served as a congresswoman she for did. New York. Did well, yeah, because that's where you have to go if you want political power. Well, apparently not. I mean, he was governor of Arkansas and became president of the United <laughs> States. So apparently, you can even go down into Arkansas. Yeah, but you got to get out of Arkansas to get more power. He did. Yeah, By and getting then he that power. stayed out. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, come on. Once you've been president, you don't need to worry about power anymore. You're going to get paid millions of dollars to go to colleges and give speeches but what and to write books. But what if your spouse wants power? Like well, Hillary. Then, 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 you, then you got a problem. You got to hope that your spouse wants it more. <laughs> or wants it enough, I should say. She should have wanted yeah, it more. Yeah, she should have wanted it more. Anyways, so two two political families. All right, Clinton so yeah, one, and... one of them is the Clintons, and uh-huh. um, they lost a couple of elections to Clinton because he started courting the Irish voters. Uh... Um, so yeah, Tammany's going to realize, okay, we need to make a change to this, because by 1820... Oh, no, I'm looking at something different. Oh, okay, yeah, I missed a couple of things. All right. So in 1805 is when, uh, the, is when Tammany Hall got a charter from the federal government to be mm-hmm. a charitable organization. So like uh, non-profit. Oh, sorry, no, that was from that was from the state government. They got a state charter that allowed them to be a uh, a charitable organization. So in other words, they got some tax credits and people were able to donate money with them without it looking illegal. Yeah. Um and it was in 1828 that they got some federal contracts. This was in part because they supported the election of Andrew Jackson and this was their kickback uh-huh. if you will, was that some of their members were going to get appointed to federal jobs. Yeah. And I think this is like the last real big effort that at least I remember uh, seeing of them getting involved in federal politics versus staying in the city or yeah. occasionally dipping into the state. Okay, they had a hand in 1834 of changing New York state constitution to amend it so that the mayors could be elected by popular vote. This meant that Tammany Hall would be able to have more influence, especially because, more again, they voted for allowing all free white males to vote. Um, and right. during a lot of the, oh, so this is going to bring up another of the charge of the, um, nefarious activities for them, uh, at least in the, during the election of 1834, it looks like they, now they are not sole in this. Um, the Whigs were supposedly doing this too, and I'm sure plenty of political parties and oh, political uh, groups have done this all, sort of thing throughout history. Yes, all of them. But yes, they, they were known to bring in people from out of state, from mm-hmm. out of county to cast their votes and oh, even pay gosh. people. At the polling places, pay these people 
to vote for them. That's a no-no. The highest amount that I could find evidence for was, uh, at the time, $22. But basically today, <sighs> it's paying $700 at the poll site for somebody to cast their vote the way you want them to. Oh, my gosh. Do you imagine how many people would gladly take $700 at polling places today? <laughs> she is fibbing. We hold ourselves to a higher moral authority or accountability here I on uh, Married to History Pod. <laughs> I cannot say honestly that it wouldn't be tempting. <laughs> it's okay to be tempting. The question is, are you going to yield to that temptation or not? All right. So getting back to the Irish portion. So uh, the Irish potato famine is going to be very good for Tammany Hall, very bad for the Irish, of course. Mm -hmm. For those who aren't familiar with it, Ireland has a huge crop of potatoes, but uh, potato blight, basically a bacterial infection, mm -hmm. is going to destroy a lot of the crops and spread like wildfire to the point where Ireland is going to suffer massively. If I recall right. correctly, it's believed that as much as a fifth of Ireland's population is gone oh now that's not all from deaths a lot of that is people leaving and coming to the america oh. uh, coming to america more than anything else but a lot of the one of that 20 percent of the population that just yeah. disappears yeah it was mostly either people coming to america or died in the famine dang yeah but what this also creates is basically uh, by the end of the 1840s new york is about 33 percent irish and with Tammany going like mad, trying to get that Irish vote, and, and one of the reasons why they're going to go mad for this is because, think about it, that's a third of the vote. Mm -hmm. If you can secure that, if you can lock down that third of the vote, and the rest of the vote is split evenly between you and your opponents, yeah. that still means you win by super majority, not by bare majority. Yeah. Math is mathin'. And so they're going to do a lot of things. They're, they're effectively going to create one of the first, if not the first, welfare state that exists in the United States. Really? So with the, all these Irish immigrants coming in, they're poor. They don't have anywhere to go. Tammany's going to do a lot of stuff to help them find jobs. It's going to do a lot of stuff to help them pay their rents, get their uh, pay for food. It's going to bail a lot of them out of jail, or it's going to talk to judges and say, hey, let, let this guy off. He, he doesn't need to be in jail. Right. All kinds of things to court the Irish, and it works spectacularly for them. They seriously lock down the Irish vote for practically the entirety of the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to lose that until things change in New York until about the beginnings, middle of the, or until about the 1920s or so. Wow. So yeah, they're going to have the Irish uh, basically in their pocket for the better part of the 1800s. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, by 1852, Tammany is basically taking control of New York City Council. Uh, they're, uh, and they, uh, any seats that they don't have, they fire some of the people from the council and they replace with their oh own my people. Gosh. Um, uh, it's during this time in 1852 specifically that they are known because it's a 40 man council that, uh, some newspapers are going to call them the council of the 40 thieves. That's uh, clever. And I want to be clear. That's not to be confused with, I kid you not, a street game operating in New York at the time that was also called the 40 thieves. Though to be fair, oh. they were, to be fair, they weren't operating in New York anymore at the time. The 40 thieves street gang, which was active from about the mid twenties, up until about 40, so they were gone, effectively, uh -huh. or at least defeated, crushed, whatever, or at, might have just merged with other street gangs yeah. uh, by that time. But the name was up for grabs. But yes, yeah, so the name was up for grabs, and it was given to this the 40 men on this council for oh New York City. Gosh. And again, same old shenanigans. They're uh, overcharging the government for various projects, uh -huh. pocketing the money. Oh, and then I forgot to mention the bribery, bribing judges, bribing police officers, uh. Uh, bribing the governor, bribing people in the governor's cabinet, bribing the attorney generals, If the uh, mm -hmm. bribery only being necessary if these weren't already Tammany-appointed men to these positions. Right. You got to get as many in your pocket as you can yeah so yeah among the things they did oh yeah uh, among the thing the council of the 40 thieves did were they controlled the police department they controlled appointments to just about every government job they controlled the saloons the streetcar companies and mm -hmm. ferry licenses so that if you wanted to start a saloon or I didn't a know there streetcar were company in new york or ferry where did they all go did they have magic f-e-r-r-y not f-a-i-r-y okay yeah Give me strength. <laughs> a lot of their members served on judges in the criminal courts. They got to choose which cases they were going to hear, and they could choose which ones to dismiss, and they could choose the jury members. 
on the trials no. that they decided to handle. No. So they completely controlled the court system. No. Yes. You can't. No. They can, and they did. See, everything else makes sense to me. The bribery, the corruption, whatever, but like, that just seems like an extra step over the line. It's been, it, it, you've heard that phrase, when power corrupts, it corrupts absolutely, right? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All right, so, uh, we've already talked about like skimming off the top of public works projects and what. Oh, mm-hmm. that reminds me, uh, there was a celebration that was being planned. I don't remember if it was for the 4th of July or for something. And mm-hmm. so they were going to have, they decided to have, we're going to have this big, huge fireworks show. Yeah. There were fireworks. What? They just pocketed the rest of the money that they didn't spend on the grand fireworks show. Oh. So they didn't spend all the money that was approved for the fireworks on fireworks. Yeah. They pocketed a lot they, of it. They uh, gathered it all and then spent yeah. on a budget. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, oh, I forgot about this one. This one was a good one. They also put forward purposely, and some people I think say that this is what goes on still in politics today. Uh-huh. They purposefully put forward in the state assembly or in the city charter mm-hmm. ridiculous legislative bills. Like they were going to say, all right, we're going to outlaw lights. We're going to put a bill on this uh, on yeah. the on the state assembly that's going to outlaw lights. Everyone knows that's – It's a ridiculous, no. yes, yeah. but then a business will come along and say, if we can't have lights in our buildings, well, then people won't be able to shop at our store anymore. So they would go to Tammany and bribe them to kill this legislative bill before oh, it sees the light of day. Gosh. So they would purposely create bills that they knew mm-hmm. rich people or wealthy people or companies or businesses, whatever, were mm-hmm. not going to like – so that they could get bribed to kill those things. Again, That's these were not things that the people of New York were asking for. They yeah. came up with these things to tick off and thus be able to elicit a bribe oh, no. from the people that they were trying to tick off. That's so. <laughs> That's really smart. Yes. That's really, really, dirty. really smart and really corrupt. So th- th- this is something that uh, we often get to in trouble with my students. Corruption is bad. It is immoral. It is reprehensible. Mm-hmm. But it still requires smarts to be done effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Like when the girls were little and remember uh, Secundus would like manipulate Primus out of her Halloween candy or something. <laughs> yes. So proud of her that she was able to like come I, I remember up with that. this remember that. We were very proud deal. of her that she was able to do, do this kind of <laughs> but work. But it's so wrong. It was, for the, it was for her evil means. She was using her power for awesome, not good. <laughs> Yeah, so I get it. <laughs> All right, so moving along here. Oh, 1854 is when Tammany gets its first win, or its first, in other words, its first own man instead of the guy it supported or the guy it liked. Okay. It's its first man in the mayor spot. Okay. Uh, eight, uh, 1854 election to New York City. His name is Fernando Wood, and he uh, tried to run New York basically as if he were the king. He is a guy mm. who is basically going to... I don't remember if he fires the police force that existed at the time, what? but he's going to fill the police force with his own choice guys, and they are going to be his private army. They are loyal to him, no. and despite the fact that they are his own private army and that they are loyal to him, uh-huh. he's skimming off of their budget. They are paying him oh for the gosh. privilege of being police officers in his army. Though, granted, to be clear, I didn't see what? anything that suggested they knew that was happening. Yeah. But if nothing else, at least some way, somehow, some of the money that was supposed to go to the police officers mm-hmm. still ended up in this mayor's pocket. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Tell me the year again. So this was 1854. His name was Fernando Wood. He is the wow. first Tammany man to be elected mayor in New York City. Wow. All right. Um, so, yeah, he appointed and fired officers at his will. He was accused of only hiring Democrats to be police officers mm-hmm. instead of Whigs or by 1954, the Republicans were around, uh, okay. but they wouldn't have been that big at the time. Oh, and there were also charges that none of the vice codes were ever actually enforced. So What's saloons that? and brothels and whatnot. Uh, oh, vices, uh, oh, vices, sins. alcohol and yeah, mm-hmm. sins. Um, usually alcohol and prostitution. Uh, yeah, he let those go. The police didn't enforce any of those because those were popular and they kept yeah. people happy. Well, and they could probably collect more bribes somewhere around in there. Okay, so um, so I mentioned that the Republican Party came into being. So this now they are going to they are going to have a lot of gains 
in the state of New York, but not mm-hmm. in New York City, where Tammany is basically going to still be in control. But the Republicans oh. are going to be able to use their state influence to amend a couple of things. Um, okay. They're going to make it so that city department heads are going to be elected rather than appointed by the mayor. So that means that Tammany's yes. got to win more elections. They're also going to create a state-controlled New York Metropolitan Police Force. This, I believe, is the pre is the for, uh, the origination of the police force that still is in New York City today. So right. basically, when they do this, they're they're doing this because they want to get rid of the mayor. They know what the mayor is doing, mm-hmm. and so New York City basically now has two police forces. There's the municipal police force, which is the one that's loyal to the mayor, and there's uh-huh. the metropolitan police force. And how the state ends up doing this is that they are going to take uh, police officers from the counties that surround New York City uh-huh. and combine them all with New York City's guys uh-huh. to create the metropolitan police force. So this is NYPD? So this, yeah, uh, they're not going to be called that for a long time, and okay. it's possible that there are other uh, mm-hmm. changes in the organization before okay. we get to the NYPD. But I do believe that this state-created force is the beginnings of what will eventually become the, the yeah. NYPD. Just any way that they could take power mm-hmm. away from the mayor. So some people from the mayor's force do join the munis- uh, the uh, Metropolitan Police Force, but uh-huh. most of them stay loyal to the mayor. And wow. because there are now two police forces, this is going to create a very awkward situation in New York City. I'd imagine. One side is enforcing rules that the other side isn't. One side is arresting guys that the other side, is, uh, that the other side says, nah, you can't do that. Uh-huh. On at least a couple of occasions when one side or the other arrests some people the other side is going to break into the jailhouse and rescue no. liberate those people they're going to have a big oh fight gosh. between them over the the police headquarters whatever that building was at the time because yeah. they're both sides are going to try to occupy it and they're not going to work too well wow. but the kicker is when somebody finally issues a warrant against the mayor himself <gasps> So the Metropolitan guys, now they are outnumbered. There's like 300 or so Metropolitan guys, and there's well over 500, maybe as many as 1,000 uh, municipal guys that are loyal to the mayor. Wow. So they go and try to serve the warrant. Warrant. The municipal guys beat them up. So <laughs> the Metropolitan guys, they get a larger force. They go back. The municipals have also gathered a larger force. They're mm-hmm. barricading themselves around City Hall, and they've got some of the locals, so no. not police force members, but local people who are favorable because they're foolish enough to like Tammany Hall uh, to support them. And there's this big old fight uh, outside and over the over City Hall just to serve this warrant on the mayor. Holy Um, cow. Who wins? Uh, Did they get the mayor? uh, Yeah, they do. But let me uh, get me fine where that was. Uh, Oh, that's right. Okay. So one of the other divisions between the the municipals, the guys loyal to the mayor, well, they were Irish. They were largely Mm. from the immigrant population. And the Metropolitans were mostly the nationals, the American, uh, or the sovereign Americans, I guess you could say, peoples. Oh. Here. Okay, both sides also had streak gang uh, support from various different groups. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, the charge against the mayor was that uh, he had tried to remove some government appointees from their offices and had used threats of violence to get them to leave. Oh, okay. Seems likely. Uh, the brawl ensued. Okay. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this part. So the state eventually was forced to call in the army to Dang. help it out. And so, yes, the, the mayor finally surrendered in the face of this. The war wow. was served on him. And uh, let's see here. That wasn't the end of his career, though. So Wood was r- was running the place like it was his mm-hmm. own private police force, and he was trying to run the city like he was. A- so right. Wood, w- this led to a break between Tammany and Wood. Tammany was not still supporting Wood. Really? Wood still had the love of the people, but Tammany was not supporting it anymore. They and especially after this issue with the brawl, they yeah completely cut him off and wanted nothing to do with him. Well, yeah, he, he looks bad on them. Yeah. And this is going to actually lead to Wood, if I remember correctly, creating his own uh, uh, political his machine. own political machine, his own political entity wow. in New York after this. Well, he's got his own little army. He's got uh, a good start. Okay, so so Wood, okay, so Wood, uh, for whatever reason, does not get found guilty of the charge, or at least if he mm. does, his punishment is slight, and he tries to run for mayor again. Yeah, Tam- this is going to be one of the times where Tammany is actually going to support the Republicans, their Whoa. enemies, against him because they do not want him to win the election. They again. didn't have another guy ready to put up. They did not have one of their own guys, no. But th- there was a Democratic candidate that they uh-huh. had up there. But for whatever reason, they ended up supporting the Republican instead. I don't remember entirely what their reason was. Wow. Um, 
So in 1859, after the election, um, Mozart, or sorry, Wood is going to start his own group. He's going to call his group Mozart Hall. Mo- um, like Mozart, like the composer? Yep, Mozart Hall. He's going to run again, and uh, he's going to win the three-way split between the Republican candidate, no. and now Tammany is eventually going to have a candidate of their own in the 1859 election. He's going to win that three-way split. The Democratic Party is going to split again during the American Civil War. Again, it's going to be the pro-war Democrats and the uh-huh. anti-war Democrats. Tammany, if I remember correctly, this time is going to be the anti-war Democrats, and Mozart oh. is going to be the pro, I think. Uh, let me double-check that. Oh, no, my bad. Tammany controls the war uh, favoring, but Wood is going to support the peace ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but And one of the problems for this is going to be that even the peace Democrats aren't entirely in mind. There are some that say, peace at any cost, let them go. Mm-hmm. And there are others that say, well, no, like, we want peace, but we want them to stay still. So we should find mm-hmm. a peaceful way to get them to stay. And the, the most obvious thing for that is going to be, let's not outlaw slavery. Oh, all right, in 1861, the Republicans are going to win for mayor again. And they, oh, a- after the war is over, Mozart Hall is eventually going to disappear, and they're going to realign themselves with Tammany Hall. So hmm. that that brief schism in New York mm-hmm. City is gone, and Tammany is back to being the undisputed dominant power for the Democrats in New York City. Wow. All right, so it's uh, in the wake of the Civil War that the Tweed era is going to begin. So this was one of the guys whose names oh. looked familiar to me. I should have written down his first name. I don't know why I didn't, uh, but he's un- he's known as Boss Tweed. I've it was heard that name. That, that name sounded familiar yes. to me. But again, after I read about him, like, yeah, I, I have no idea why his name sounds familiar to me. Yeah. So, yeah, he's going to be arguably the most famous and successful, successfully corrupt, of uh, Tammany's <laughs> leaders. He's going to convince uh, the city government to put him on the board of supervisors, and he's going to use that as a springboard to get other appointments of mm-hmm. his own guys and friends into various other political offices so that he can effectively be running the city. So, yeah, he becomes the leader of Tammany Hall after uh, his uh, clever political chicanery there, and he's going to use that to take basically take control of the government during his time. Protégés of his are going to be elected to governor and mayor of the city, and I think he's also going to get um, a guy in the city attorney's office. So he oh. basically controls not just New York City at this point, but he even has a good chunk of the state pie Ooh. because of this. Seems like a bad idea. Yeah. So for corruption, yes. Uh, and the people that he appoints to all their various functions, well, they give him lots of access to city funds and contracts so that he can do the ever old chicanery of, oh, we're going to build buildings and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be overcharging and skimming off the top in addition to my overcharging. Right. But a couple of the projects that are going to get done during his chicanery, so arguably for good or bad, are going to be the Brooklyn Bridge is going to get built and the oh. Metropolitan Museum of Art is no going to get uh, built too. So whether or not these would have happened, whether he if he was gone or not, uh, they probably would have happened on their own, but he definitely yeah. had a hand in them getting done when they did. Um, See, that's he was also able to use all of this, um, these, this money and this jobs to again further establish their control over the Irish labor force. Uh-huh. So, yeah, he, um, as has been said before, he controlled the courts, he controlled the legislature. Uh, because of his access to the city coffers, he also controlled the treasury, mm. and he even had say, control of the ballot box. Um, a lot of the things that Tammany would do during this time was they would have local street gangs that were loyal to them, especially yeah. the Irish ones, would be their poll watchers, uh-huh. making sure that things went down smoothly and fairly at the polling places yeah very noble cause Mm -hmm. all right so yeah he's going to go on and continue to be in charge of tammany before until uh the cycle repeats of the scandal coming to light and how the scandal comes to light is actually rather entertaining i thought Mm -hmm. uh basically what's going to happen is tammany's accountant uh, Mm -hmm. the guy who keeps their books yeah he's going to pass away and, or so, so I should be clear. He's the guy who keeps their books, but he's a city employee at the same time. Oh. So he's going to pass away, and the guy they're going to appoint to replace him is not a Tammany man. He's going to find the ledgers, and he's going to give it to the press, Uh-oh. which basically proves that they're awful and shows all the, the times they've been overcharging and what they've been doing. Yep. So this is going to get bad in Tammany's minds. And then to make things worse after that is going to be the Orange Riots. I had no idea that the Orange Riots had an effect on this. 
Stuff. Orange, right? So, I yeah, feel like is, you mentioned that. It is, it is not the fruit, the orange. I'm, this is going to take us back a little bit in history again. Oh, my gosh. All right. So where do I begin to make this story simple? All right. Yeah, because so, we're, you're we're familiar- at about an hour now. You gotta- you, you're, you're familiar- <laughs> well, you're going to cut a lot of my pausing and whatnot out of this. <laughs> not All right, that so much. To, so do some quick political context. You're familiar with Oliver Cromwell, yes? Yes. All right. So after Oliver Cromwell is out of power, the British invite the monarchy back to become kings of England. Yes, Charles II. Charles II comes back. His son James II, or was it his brother? His brother James II. I don't know. Uh, succeeds him. I don't remember if it was his brother or son now. Anyway, not important. Oh no, not his son. It wasn't his son. It was his brother then. James II yeah, was because, his brother. Okay. Because the Stuarts ended with him. Okay, so yeah, uh, James II becomes king, but James is not popular, so they kick him out too, and they invite his nephew, William of Orange, to come with his uh, oh. wife, Mary, who is the daughter of James II, I think, or the niece of James II, I, I don't remember which, but anyway, the British invite William and Mary, who are the prince and princess of uh, the Netherlands at this time, uh-huh. to come uh, to come and be effectively the rulers so william's title at the time was uh prince or duke of orange i think it was prince of orange was so that's orange? a netherland title that is why this is called the orange riots what happens in new york is there are two types of irishmen mm-hmm. there are the protestant irish mm-hmm. and there are the catholic, catholic irish the protestant irish want to celebrate the reign of William the Third and his wife Mary. They're happy about this, so uh-huh. they want to have a parade to, for him. Because there's Uh-oh. a lot of there's at least enough Protestant right. Irish in New York City. Well, the Catholic Irish see these guys as traitors, and also the Catholics, they're like, oh, the, these Protestants, they're hicks, they're they're they're, they're not right. true Irish Catholics. They're not following the right God. They they are yeah. mo- they're monarchists. Amongst other yeah, things. Yeah, well, Catholic versus Protestant is yeah. a big so, deal. So there are riots as this parade tries to go. Oh now, my gosh. Um, this, they, get the, they try to do this one year and it doesn't go well. The parade is stopped really quickly. They try to do this again in 1871. This is when the orange, the one that's going to be called the Orange Riots, take place. And basically, yeah, the, it's going to be the same thing. There's going to be some friendly blocks, like uh, of the the parade didn't get to all the way to its end. I think there were like a handful of friendly uh-huh. blocks that it went through. But then whenever they got to a hostile block oh filled with the gosh. Catholic Irish, yeah, just a brawl for it all. People people died. A lot of people got hurt. No. A lot of property damage. So this is going to be bad for Tammany, especially because it's going to be seen as you can't control the Irish. One of the reasons oh why Tammany is tolerated by a lot of people in power is because it is seen or it is believed that Tammany can control the Irish population, keep them in line, make sure they're not going to do anything bad or protest against us or whatever the case might be. Yeah. So with a combination of groups of people are need to be controlled instead of, okay. Yeah. With a combination (laughs) of their latest batch of corruption going on. And now they can't even keep the Uh people that we believe they care. They're supposed to be able to keep in line. Yeah. This is going to be another one of those marks where, Oh, Tammany is going to sink in their popularity. Their uh-huh. opponents are going to be able to get away with some so some successes. Uh, Tweed is going to go to prison for a time. No way. Yep, they're going to throw him in prison. I don't remember how long he stays there. I think he died. He dies shortly after this. I don't remember what the cause was. Okay. But again, the pattern repeats itself. Tammany's going to get new leadership because their mm-hmm. old leader got busted in a corruption scandal of some kind. And after like a five, yeah. ten years or Lay so, low they, for get, a bit. they get back into the business of uh, uh, business as usual and mm-hmm. taking over the city again. All right. So in the late 1800s, progressivism is going to be a problem for Tammany. They are not big on progressives and reform, but there's a lot of call for progressives. But they and reform. were progressive in their own ways. In their own way, but th- think about At certain it. Certain times. Think about it like a lot of other revolutions. You get if you're part of the original revolutionary movement, you have your goals. Once uh-huh. you get your goals, you don't want the revolution to continue. You want it to stop. Right. If the revolution continues, then it's going to go past your goals. Right. We see this in revolutions that have happened all throughout the time. One could argue that the the women's revolution or the women's rights movement uh-huh. definitely hit its goals. And then continued past what its original goals were to the point where today, even not all women are in agreement on what are our goals. Right. Uh, The French Revolution is the same thing. They got to one point, but then one after another, French revolutionary governments during that time period were killed by the next wave of revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, why are you guys stopping? We need to do more. While the others are trying to hold back and say, "Eh, we're getting a little bit too close to the edge of what might be bad here. Right. So progressivism bad. 
All right, so Tammany is going to do some things to help uh, progressives so that they can try to get that idea of being the the friend of the working man. But mm-hmm. for the most part, they are still the the hands off government type. They're like, no, less government interfer- mm. interference and things because more government interference means more jobs that we got to compete for and more bribes we got to dish out. Right. More. Well, sorry. More more guys we got to compete with. More bribes we got to dish out and more risk of somebody getting into power that even though we put them there. We can't control like wood. Yeah. All right. So things are going to get exceptionally bad for Tammany in the 1890s when a new committee, uh, it's known as the, or what are, oh, sorry. It's, it's a bunch of different committees um, founded largely by the Republicans are going to get, are going to do investigations into Tammany Hall. Mm-hmm. And so lots of corruption is going to be found. They're going to lose a lot of elections. The people that are in support of the, the reform ideas and progressivism, though, they're not going to be happy about those. And they're going to go through the streets chanting, well, 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 reform has gone to hell. <laughs> Not the most catchy chant. <laughs> yeah. So now we get into the 1900s. Uh, Tammany managed to endure another bad spell. They were able to get uh, uniform control of the Democrats again. The Republicans and the Reformers are fighting amongst themselves. William Randolph Hearst actually hey, tries newspaper to... newspaper guy. Yep, he tries to make a deal with Tammany to get into some public office. His goal is, is to eventually become president of the United States, mm-hmm. but he's going to start by getting Tammany to help him run for Congress. That's not going to go over well. So then he's going to try to run for mayor. That's also not going to go over well. Why? And then he's going to go from uh, for governor. Uh, well, when he threatens, he just he loses the elections. Even though he got Tammany support, he loses really? those elections. Then he's going to try to run for governor without Tammany support. Oh, he's going to run for governor twice. Once with their support, once without it. And he's going to fail both of those times, too. Oh, and then he's going to give up on his political ambitions and go back to California. Oh, right. I forgot he went to California. Yeah, he was from he California. Didn't stay- yeah. Oh, Oh, I don't know if he was from California, but yeah, California is where he at least ends. Yeah. All right. So 1920. All right. So 1920, things are going to change for Tammany again. So first off, Tammany is going to have some problems because it's had a lot of good alliance with the street gangs in the past. Mm -hmm. But in the 1920s, that's going to start to disappear. Organized crime, the mob, are going to start to overshadow, overpower, out-influence the street gangs. It's now the mob that you've got to deal with instead of these street gangs, or the mob is the more serious player. And one of the problems for Tammany is... The mobs are not Irish. They are Italian uh-huh. for the most part. The, some of the more famous mob names like Lucky Luciano is an Italian. So uh-huh. Tammany's going to have to start changing its demographic again. By this point, Tammany's leadership is almost all Irish or Irish born, I- Irish in the make. Yeah. But they're starting to see, okay, the, the trends, the, the, the ethnicity of the city is starting to change again. So they have to adapt to keep their power. So they have to adapt to this. And this is going to be problematic for them because the mobsters are much more effective at killing each other than a lot of the street Mm. gangs were. So on a couple of occasions, Tammany is supporting one mobster only to see that mobster get whacked by another one that they don't have any connections with. Or as crime investigation is starting to get better, as uh, the state and attorneys are starting to to build more and more of a case as having more power and the the ability to enforce the law. This is making it not harder for Tammany to get away with stuff, but they're also cracking down on other mobsters. Again, the ones that Mm -hmm. Tammany is trying to bribe. And on more than a couple of the guys that are going to get mobbed by guys that are going to get busted by the, by the city or the state Mm -hmm. are going to Tammany connection to these guys are going to be found, which is going to get Tammany into yep. hot water again, again, bringing more and more to light the, the corruption that's already existent in the hall. Right. But yeah, they're, they're still not out yet. They still have, um, they're still the leaders of the Democratic Party. They're still making a lot of headway. They still got a lot of votes. Um, so in 1928 is effectively when things are definitely starting to die. It's clear that they're going out because mm-hmm. this is when FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, mm-hmm. is going to get elected to be governor of New York. Okay. Now, to be clear, the uh, I don't know if this is the only reason, but it's at least suggested that one of the only reasons he considers running is because a head guy from Tammany Hall, who was a former U.S. congressman, yeah. is going to tell FDR, hey, you should run and we're going to back you. Okay. FDR does have been, whatever his reasons, he eventually does run. He eventually does win. Yeah. But then if he did have a deal with Tammany, oh, he stabbed them in the back. Really? He did not appoint any of their men. <gasps> he ended all of his affiliation with them, appointed all of his own guys, and Whoa. they were under orders to go after Tammany to find the corruption and to bust these guys. No way. Yep. And uh, the guy he appoints to be uh, attorney general is going to do a very good job of going after them. 
So this was kind of fun. All right, so this happened on December 7th, 1929. I had never heard of this before, but it was interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, there is uh, an organized robbery of one Judge Albert H. Vitale, who's a Tammany man, uh-huh. uh, during a dinner party. Shortly after this robbery, and so he and all his guests are robbed, Shortly okay. after this robbery, the gangsters, uh, some of them turned themselves, the people who committed the robbery, uh, some of them turned themselves in, and some of the, pro- or almost all of the property is returned. Really? The fact that this happened called some people to question, so who's this guy Vitaly connected with that we've got all our stuff back? Because this, think about it, the guys right. turned themselves in and they gave all the Why? stuff back. This is like they are apologizing to somebody. Somebody that they robbed from at this event is not the kind of guy that whose ire they want to get. Oh. So this is going to lead to the suspicion that he's a corrupt judge. There's going to be an investigation, and sure enough, they're going to find that there's a corruption in uh, law enforcement and the judicial system mm-hmm. within him. He's going to get accused of owing money to several mobs, or to at least one mobster. Mm-hmm. And he's also going to be investigated for failing to explain how he has such assets. Uh, he had... He has so much money that he has like four times what he could have possibly made what? as a judge for New York City. So Red even flag. though he's on Superior Court Red for New flag. York City. So yeah, he's going to get into a little hot water. So and a couple of judges are going to get busted during these investigations. Some are going to get busted for uh, fraudulently attaining leases for various shipping companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, some are going to get busted for making direct payments to Tammany Hall. <laughs> some of them are even going to get busted for paying Tammany Hall to try to have them replace this judge that oh got robbed gosh. that they now think is connected to the mob. Oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah, so like I said, FDR is going to launch a series of investigations. There's going to be investigations into gambling, into police mm-hmm. uh, corruption, into corruption in the court system, into corruption into bail uh, bail bond schemes, mm. um, into uh, the improper arrests of various people, most especially women and anyone accused of being prostitutes, even innocent women. Yeah, um, A lot more corrupt judges are going to be found in this. They're going to be identified and dismissed um, a lot of political officer or officials including the mayor are going to be forced to resign others are going to be indicted and some arrested wow then when fdr becomes president he's going to continue his campaign of putting the nail in the tammany coffin really so uh he is going to first off strip them of the federal patronage that they have held ever since the days of andrew jackson he's going to strip wow. that away from them so they no longer have any federal contract or recognition or anything to that nature Dang. He's going to make sure that uh, this, among the things, this is going to make sure that they are not going to get any of the money that is going into New York City from the New Deal programs. Ooh. That money is going to go to Tammany's competitors instead. <gasps> so that's going to draw people to go to these competitors that's, instead of to Tammany. That'll handicap them, yep. right? And then uh, Roosevelt is also going to help the ever popular Fioretta LaGuardia, arguably the most famous, or at least in the top, most famous of mayors in New York's history. And he is going to go after Tammany hard Mm -hmm. to get rid of them. Um, so yeah, th- this, all, all of this is just going to be removing with the removal of all these officials yeah. and taking this money away from them, taking the charter away from them, everything. This is just slowly, slowly going to be just really pounding in to Tammany's ability to do yeah. what's made it, uh, rich and powerful all this time to be able to have access to all these government positions. Right. Chip away at them. Yep. Tammany depended upon government contracts, depended on government jobs, patronage, corruption, the ability of its leaders to control Demo- uh, nominations to the Democratic ticket, and it's going to mm-hmm. lose all of these under the uh, attacks from LaGuardia, and specifically, uh, but also FDR. In fact, uh, wow. Fioretta LaGuardia is going to go on to be the first mayor, the first non-Tammany mayor to serve more than one consecutive ter- or it's just served two consecutive terms or more. He's going to go on to serve three wow. consecutive terms. Nobody, no non Tammany mayor has ever been able to do that before. Whoa. Tammany is eventually going to be able to get another man back into the mayor spot in 1945. So the mm-hmm. tail end of the war and FDR is, uh, well, he might not have been dead at the time that they got this done. Mm-hmm. But uh, their man is going to get reelected in 1949. But shortly thereafter, another bribery scandal. And mm-hmm. he's going to be in- implicated in uh, some connections to, uh, mob boss and this is going to lead to the not only his resignation but the resignation of hundreds of police officers who are also caught up in uh, some gambling operations right um over 300 police officers are going to be caught up in this ring and either quit or uh, otherwise get out of the job 
And yeah, Tammany is never really going to recover from this. They're going to have some small wisps of life. Like in the 1950s, mm-hmm. they're going to have a brief attempt at a comeback. I mean, they, they're going to have a success. They're going to get in a successful mayor back in 53. We talked about that. They're actually going to even get one of their men governor in 1954. Okay. And they're going to be able to stop a couple of their adversaries uh, from getting the spot for state attorney general also. Mm-hmm. But these are going to be short-lived and the last of their success. Um, wow. So uh, among the things that have changed, again, the Tammany doesn't even have Irish leadership anymore. A lot of their leadership is Italian by this point, so mm-hmm. they've lost that connection. Among the people that are going to go out of their way to kill them during this time period is going to be Eleanor Roosevelt. She's going to finish right the on. job and try to kill them in the press and, and uh, with public knowledge of their, uh, their antics. Mm-hmm. Another thing that's going to kill them is that uh, after World War II is over, you got a whole bunch of reformed-minded uh, vets coming back to New York City that, believe it or not, want to join Tammany because Tammany still has, at least in the minds of the people, recognition of some legitimacy. But Tammany is going to shut them out because they're reformists, which forces them to start their own party, which gets more press and gets more support Uh than Tammany does at this time that Tammany is losing. So that was a bad idea. So yeah, eff- effectively, Tammany is just going to lose more and more as time goes by. By 1961, their last leader is ousted from the hall. I don't uh-huh. know if he got arrested or busted, but he's out. Tammany goes on for a couple more years without any kind of leader, but effectively mm-hmm. disappears completely by 1967. Wow. So yes, an organization that did the, all the kind of dirty tricks that we hear about in politics, bribery, uh, price gouging, uh-huh. extortion rackets, everything under the sun. And the the thing that I found more famous than anything else was just how quickly they went from getting caught and exposed uh-huh. to people either forgetting or just not caring and them getting right back into power doing the exact same things they were before over and over and over right. again for the better part of 200 years. That's nuts. All right, so we're not done yet, though, because there's a couple of fun things that I got. I want to share with you because I think I you're going to like these. Things. All right, so I am debating which one of these I should tell you first because there are two of these that I think you are going to love. <laughs> so I'm going to start. I got three of them for you. I'm going to start with the one that I think you're going to love least, but I think some okay. of our listeners might be interested in. Can't wait. So Tammany Hall is prominently featured in the 2002 film Gangs of New York, which is based on a okay. book written in 1930s, or 1927 called... The Gangs of New York, which was about the gangs in New York. Tammany yeah. Hall gets mentioned in there. Boss Tweed is a character in that book. Oh. So one of the gangs that I remember came up regularly in my reading was mm-hmm. the um, the Dead Rabbits. And I know that they are one of the <laughs> gangs that are in the movie. It's a great name. Yeah. So yeah, they, they were a real gang. And yeah, they, so they wow. get featured a lot in this. They also get at least one or two Tammany members, if not Tammany as, uh, as itself, mm-hmm. does get a mention in the book Ragtime, which is <gasps> the basis of the musical what? Ragtime as well. What? So a character or two, uh, one of the, um, I remember some, one of my research, he's in the, I know his name is mentioned in the book. I uh-huh. don't remember if his name was in the musical. What's his name? It, it was one of the, one of the leaders, one of the names that I thought I recognized. But again, when I read about okay. him, didn't see anything. And then and most of my research actually wasn't too much to talk about with him. So don't know why one thing I read said yeah. that he was one of the top guys and just about everything else didn't, didn't mention him or anything that I didn't read that yeah. specifically was about him. Didn't mention him. Well, now I need to find a bootleg of, of a stage production of ragtime so All I can right. watch it. So, but it doesn't end with ragtime. All right. So okay. next on my list, the 1959 Broadway musical Fiorello describing the life of Fiorello de Guardia includes uh-huh. amongst other things, uh, his campaign against Tammany Hall during the thirties. I've never heard of this. Uh, it's 1959 Broadway musical, so it's a bit older than that 1981 I told you about for, uh, <laughs> Mutiny. for uh, Mutiny on the Bounty. <laughs> All right, and then this was the last one. And believe it or not, this was one of the very first things that came up in my research, well, there, that I saw in my research and I probably uh-huh. focused on because I thought it was the coolest thing. <clears throat> in 2007, a board game called Tammany Hall which is based on the Tammany Hall politics and is an area control game what? became available. It is still available on Amazon. What? And according to Amazon's recommendation list, if you like coup <gasps> and if you like ticket to ride, <gasps> you will enjoy this game. No way. Yes. We love coup and ticket to ride. We love coup and ticket to ride. 
<laughs> no way. So yes, yeah, so I thought that was very cool. So I, I took a look at a couple of the pictures. It looks like it's going to be more complicated than Koo and Ticket to mm-hmm. Ride. But especially with Koo, I, I have no doubt that, yeah, there's going to be a lot of the intrigue level in there. Oh, but yeah. it's, it's going to be Line. an area control game. And it looks like you're going to move your pieces about and you're going to con- try to control the population in these different various areas yeah. of New York to try to control the city. All right. That's awesome. So that is all the things that I found about Tammany Hall. So I want to be clear. There is a lot, and I mean uh, a lot yeah. more detail than what I went into. Clearly. So if you are interested, by all means, get into this. I am satisfied with what I've learned. Like Unless I find out something a bit more macro about some of these things, mm-hmm. I doubt that I'm going to be looking at this again. <laughs> and so if I, I doubt that this is going to be one of the things that's going to be entered into uh, the teaching curriculum that I do yeah, because of just yeah. how microscopic this is focused on New York. Maybe if I got no problem to teaching about poli- or political corruption, but I can do that without micro-focusing on this case of New York City. Well, it's, they can be used as an example of political corruption. That's true. So it might come up from time to time. Yeah, But I, 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 yeah. I'm not going to be creating a whole module around <laughs> teaching about this. <laughs> That's cool, though. That was a lot. <sighs> yes, it was. And it's probably why it took me so long to put all this together. <laughs> you, like, wrote and there was, a, and there was so wrote much that I didn't. Paper. There was so much that I didn't even read. Oh my yes, I, I told, I told, I believe I told you all the stories that I enjoyed reading about the yeah. most, P- particularly uh, Woods' uh, police rebellion. That was a fun one. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for putting all that work in. Thank you for helping me to learn something new about history. It's not You're often welcome. that this happens to me. I know it's my favorite thing when it happens. <laughs> And for any of our fans and loyal listeners who might want to like ask a question to, like on a serious subject mm-hmm. to get information. So this is the I, I hope that you're happy with the information that I shared here today. I guarantee you whatever it is you're going to ask me about, I'm going to throw myself completely into the mm-hmm. research for this because I, I like doing this. This is literally what I do for fun. Yeah. Well, okay. Technically, it's also, you know, no, I get paid to teach. I don't get paid to do the research projects. So, yeah, I do the research projects <laughs> for fun. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. It is awesome. History is awesome. It can be. It is. Okay. It, no, not can be. Okay. It is. History is awesome. Okay. Thank you for listening. I can't see your lips, but I know you're <laughs> mocking me with a smile behind there. You don't know me. I know you. Thank you for listening. If you liked what you heard, then please subscribe, tell your friends, and leave us a five-star review. If you'd like to hear a future episode with more information about today's topic, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty much not going to happen. Uh, but uh, another topic per se: contact us on Gmail, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok at Married to History Pod. Also, please contact us if you have a silly question idea, or if there's something from history that you would love to learn about. Just be sure to mention in your message if it is silly or serious, because we don't want to cheat a genuine quest for knowledge like a joke. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, I need to hear you talk at your full normal voice so I can see how it looks. Years ago, back before mankind discovered the greatness that was bananas, we were forced to consider what can we eat with grains to make them taste better, to add some sort of sweetness. Now man tried many things during this time. He tried sugar, he tried strawberries, he even tried, dare I say, the apple but all was for naught. Then, one stormy night, a cargo ship in the Caribbean got lost at sea and crashed on an island that is heretofore known as Jamaica. The good- I'm not sure you're saying that right. At all. That's when you're going to stop me? I, I'm just saying.